the next physics problem. That's what I'm calling this one, the next physics problem. I really like this one. Um, so I'm gonna, and I have a demo here, but let me read the problem and then I'll show you the demo and then we'll solve the problem. Um, a metal chain of mass 0.5 kilograms. This is not 0.5 kilograms. I don't know if you can tell, but that's not 0.5 kilograms. Uh, and it has a length of 1.2 meters. Again, this is just a demo. Frictionless horizontal surface coiled up in a ball, kind of coiled up in a ball. Uh, a person grabs one end of the chain and pulls along the table so it stretches out. The person pulls with the force of 0.2 newtons. What is the speed of the center mass when the chain is straight? And what's the increase in thermal energy? So here's, here's how this works. So I'm going to grab uh, a, like this. Oops, I got tangled. Let's untangle. Okay, so there's my there's my my kind of ball, like that. Now I'm gonna pull it, like that. So when it when it's stretched, how fast is it moving? And so I'm pulling with a constant force. But you notice that like when I'm first pulling this, I'm only pulling part of the mass. I don't know. My my video is kind of getting choppy. I think it's okay. I'm only pulling part of the, I'm only accelerating this. This part is not accelerating. So I really can't use the momentum principle here because I don't know what the mass is that I'm pulling. I mean, you could you could figure it out, but it's kind of difficult. So of course we can use, we will use the work energy principle. So let's start with the picture. Here's my coiled up chain. I'm gonna pull it with the force F. Uh, so let's write down some stuff. M equals 0 0.5 kilograms. Uh, L is the length is 1.2 meters. So I'm going to pull this and I'm going to go from here to this is my chain to here and that's F. And so the distance from here to here is 1.2 meters. So how fast is the center of mass moving? That is the key right there, center center of mass. So let's use work energy. Work is a change in energy. And I'm going to use the point particle system of the chain. In that case, the only kind of change in energy I can have is a change in kinetic energy of the center of mass. And the work is going to be the force dot the displacement of the center of mass. So if I call this my origin, um, then delta R, and this is the X in the Y direction, delta R, center of mass, is going to be equal to the vector 0, 1.2 over 2, 0. Because here's the center of mass right there in the middle. In the middle. So if I stretch this out, it's going to be half of that. You know, you could say, oh, the, the initial position that 0, 0, 0, the final position right here, find the center mass and the change of position. But I think we can all do that just like that, and that's fine. Um, so that's really L over 2. I'm going to write that as L over 2. So this is the vector 0, L over 2, 0. That's the length of my thing. So the work done is going to be my force F, which is in the X direction. Uh, why did I put that in the Y direction? I'm L over 2, 0, 0. I don't know what I was thinking. Sometimes you just don't think. And, you know, if this is uh, Top Gun 2, that's good, right? Don't think, just do. But here you really should think. So there's F. Oh, F is, uh, let's just call this F, 0, 0. So the dot product between these two, the only things that they have are the X components. So F dot delta R center of mass is going to be F L over 2. And that's going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy, K center of mass 2 minus K center of mass 1, which is 1 half M V center of mass squared. So that's pretty easy. I can solve for V center of mass. V center of mass is going to be equal to, the 2's are going to cancel. I'm going to get F L over M square root. So let's go ahead and put in my numbers. I've made up these numbers. They may be uh, unrealistic, but sometimes that happens. So I have a force of 0.2 newtons. That's what I said. 0.2 newtons. So clear square root 0.2 times 1.2 divided by 0.5 equals 0.69. That sounds good. 0.69 meters per second. 
Okay, now the next thing, the next question here says, what is the increase in internal energy of the chain, thermal energy and stuff? So for this, I don't have thermal energy. I don't have internal energy in my system. So I need to pick a different system. Um, but let's, let's look at this right here. This is important. We're gonna keep that. That's the work done by, that's the work done by the, in the point particle system and the change in kinetic energy of the center mass. So we don't have to use this. So I'm gonna use that trick right now. But let's use the system of the real chain. In the real system, the change in energy is going to be the change in kinetic energy of the center mass plus the change in internal energy or whatever kind of energy you want to have. Other stuff. It could be rotational. This one's not rotating, but it could be stuff like that. And the work is going to be equal to the real work, which is F dot delta R F. How far did the center, did the force move? So in this case, delta R F, 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 is going to be equal to L zero zero. It moved the whole length of the chain. So the real work is greater than the work done in the point particle system. I still have the same force. F is F zero zero. So the work done is going to be F L and that's going to be the change in kinetic energy of the center mass plus the change in internal energy. I'm just going to call it internal. It could be anything. It could be thermal. It could be configuration energy, sound, and all these other kind of things. So I want to solve for this, delta E internal is F L minus delta K of the center mass. And I've already found that, right? I, I said I, I put a box around it. It's F L over two. That's not that. I'm not having a good day. F L minus F L over two is F L over two. So that's it. That's the change in internal energy. We can calculate that. Uh, we can put in our numbers, so 0 0.2 newtons, 1.2 uh, meters, divided by 2, and I could probably do that in my head, but I'm not going to. Uh, 0.2 times 1.2 divided by 2 equals 0 0.12, 0 0.12 joules. So this is another example of a system where we can do it two ways. We can use the point particle system and then the real system to get a whole bunch of stuff that's really useful for us. Okay, the end.